Today, I'm going to show you how you can automate patching and other tasks through Action 1. The primary type of automation is deploy updates. Through deploy updates, you can keep all of your software and Windows and Mac uh, operating systems up to date. Here's an example. You'll need to do three things. First, you'll need to select the updates that you want to push out. Then you'll select which endpoints get the updates. And then you'll select when they're going to get the updates. So let's go back to choosing which updates you want. You'll do this by filters. Update source is the primary filter that will allow you to differentiate between the operating system updates and the third-party application updates. If you want to get more granular, you can add additional filters, such as a filter based on the type of update, or a filter based on the severity of the update. For example, you could have two automations, one for critical updates that you do the same day, and another for lower priority updates that you wait a week, just in case there's a problem with the update. You can also filter based on the name of the update. So for example, you can target a particular application for updating, like Photoshop or AutoCAD. You can also exclude particular applications from being updated. So for example, if you're only licensed for a certain version of an application, you can exclude that one, leave it as is, and update everything else instead. If you want to be a little more hands-on with the update, you can require update approval. If you don't require approval, the updates go out automatically after whatever delay you specify. If you do require update approval, the automation is going to wait until you approve the update before it pushes it out. To approve an update, you go to the Update Approval page, select the update in question, and click Approve. At that point, the next time that automation runs, it will push that update out. While doing updates, if you ever identify a problem with an update, you can click the Decline button here. That's your emergency stop button. That will prevent the update from going out to any additional endpoints. Let's go back to automations. For the select endpoint side of things, you can select a group or you can select an individual endpoint. On the schedule side of things, you can choose to do your update monthly, weekly, daily, however often you want. Again, we have a maintenance window here, so even if the endpoints are off or not on the internet when you run the update, they can still get the update later when they do reconnect, as long as it's done reconnected within the deadline you specify here. There's also some other types of automations besides deploying updates that can be helpful for you. For example, deploying software is a nice automation for you for freshly imaged machines, new laptops, things like that. You can automatically install your core software on those endpoints as soon as you put the agent onto that endpoint. You could also create multiple automations this way. So for example, you could have a general automation that installs your core software that everybody should have. And you could also create additional automations for different departments. So engineering gets the engineering applications, finance gets the finance applications, and so on. You can reboot devices periodically. You can run scripts that need to run on a recurring basis. You can also uninstall software. If somebody ins uh, installs something that you don't allow, you can target that application and just keep removing it whenever somebody installs it. Update Ring is the last type of automation. It's our most recent automation type, and it allows you to do updates in a phased rollout. So rather than pushing out all your updates at once to your whole group, you can create a set of rings and roll out your updates to them one by one. So to set that up, you'll create a series of groups as rings. So for example, I have a test lab here for my first ring. My second ring is pilot users in a production environment. Third ring might be a, a building or a department level uh, scope. And then I would have the whole company. You can make as many or as few rings as you want. And once you create the groups, you'll then create a update ring automation for each of those groups. The first one will be similar to the regular type of update um, automation where you'd be able to select which updates go out. Uh, in my case, I'm not requiring approval or any delay because it's just a test lab. Then for the second automation, that will be based on the success rate of the first automation. So an update that fails to get at least 70% success rate or installed successfully on at least 10 endpoints in my example will not get pushed out to the second ring. Also, even for successful uh, updates, I will have a delay a week so that IT has a chance to test it in their lab before it rolls out to the pilot users. 
And then subsequent rings will be the similar way. You can create different success criteria for different rings. You can create different uh, delays between rings. So you could say, test it in the test lab for a week, test it at the pilot users, test it out for a week. And then it might be a few days in the third ring and then to then before going to the fourth ring. So ideally, the goal here be, is that you, you would be able to identify problems with an update in the earlier rings that are smaller in scope or less important computers before it rolls out to the later rings, which are larger in scope or have more important computers. Once you create automations and have them running, you'll also be able to go to history and see what's run. So you can see when what automations ran, when they ran, what endpoints they targeted. And if you click on an endpoint or an automation, it will show you the endpoints that were targeted, what their success or failure rate was, and additional information.